what others said We were meant to be forever I've been dreaming about this moment I can barely breathe I feel like I've been drowning Pulling me to the ground Tears streaming down my face My chest hurts, I can't escape There's no going back now Will you miss me when I'm gone? Will you think of me? Will you think of me when you're all alone? 
Hi, everybody. Hope you hear me. Okay. So, hi, everybody. What's up? How you been doing? Um, we haven't had the stream two weeks ago. What's this? It seems... I don't know if you can hear on the stream the text-to-speech or not. Hey, Alan, nice seeing you. Hmm. Keep alert, 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 keep alert. Skip alert? So keep, skip, 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 sorry. Is this it? Hopefully it is. So, once again, hi everybody. I hope you're doing well. Uh, I definitely am. Hi, Alan. Pozdrav, Alan. Kakwe. I just answered you, by the way, on the on the on the post you made under the last video. So let me quickly answer you here. So you had two questions. How is the wind? Oh, hi, pozdrav, bok bok. So we have two Croatian speaking, but I will definitely not be speaking Croatian. Hi, John. So let me ask you. So let me answer you the question. Um, I, well, the problem with the video itself was I recorded first version, which was 93 minutes long, and it was impossible to me to shrink it. Then I re-recorded, and I didn't uh, include some of the parts, or I didn't talk about some of the things. So uh, the wind speed device has a very short cable, about this long or something like that and the wind speed is then connected to the wind direction sensor and the wind direction sensor has a very long cable and then this the wind direction sensor goes into the board pozdrav stepan hi hi signaling and trains hi nice seeing you so um yeah my last video was about the weather station this is still just just to be clear it is working, uh, but there are some quirks with it. So yeah, I still have to work on the code. There are two issues. There will probably be three issues, or there will definitely be three issues. But unfortunately, at this time, I cannot sort out the wind direction because wind direction is, as of yesterday, it was on customs in Liège. So I am expecting it here in around two, maybe three weeks. So the one problem is the the biggest problem is the sleep. All devices that go to sleep they power down the sensors. So uh, what's the issue? The issue is with the wind uh, wind gust, meaning that if there is a constant speed of the wind, the wind sensor will will wake up when the board wakes up. It will measure the current speed, go to sleep, send the data, etc. The problem with the rain sensor, it is a, it is a bucket that has something like two spoons inside, and they go flip flop, flip flop. Yeah, it's flip flop, not flop, flip flip flop. So when the water is dripping into this bucket or this spoon, when it triggers, it sends a signal, and if the board is not awake at the time, uh, it will not register it. So it can be monsoon rain for five minutes but it can stop in those 30 seconds that the board is awake and it will say no, no, no it's not raining really it's not raining it would be like wet completely and it would say no raining so what i did uh, since the video was released i changed a bit of code so now each time the trigger each time there is a trigger or each time the this this spoon flips it wakes up the board and then immediately sends it to sleep so i still have to figure out how to um, how to detect two different wakes, wake ups. One is the normal wake up, which is the 30 second uh, cycle when the board is wake up, and the other one is wake up just to register this trigger. If I manage to differentiate those two things, I will be able to record raindrops even during the sleep, 
it will not have that big impact on the battery life because I will even shorten the window. Currently it's awake for two seconds just for testing, but I will shorten it to, for example, half a second because it just needs to register one impulse and go back to sleep. And then, uh, yeah, it would it would work. So that that's it. Hi, Siegfried. Sleepix, hello, hello. Jan the man, nice seeing Holland there. Croatia, uh, Netherlands, sorry, Slipix. Yeah. Um, uh, that's really the second, that's really the second problem, Alan. Um, it's not cheap. So, uh, let me switch the screen. Let's go to main setup, main setup. Oh, by the way, before we go there to a to, to couple of sites that I want to check prices with you. Um, yeah, I don't know if anybody of you is following me on Twitter. I did something. I don't know why I did it, but uh, a lot of things that I do, I don't know why I do it. Uh, so in one of the, I think a month ago or a month and a half ago on a stream, we were looking at what things I have in my project box and there was a LoRa board. So... Yeah, I flashed the open MQTT gateway server. So this is now MQTT, LoRa to MQTT a gateway, but I do not have any LoRa devices besides this one. So yeah, okay. Um, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, sleep only so less current uh, while GPU works with the uh, CPU, but you want uh, current, you must turn up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so that that's right, Zikri. So that's the, that's the, Oh, uh, sorry, sorry, and um, you just tell me, yeah, it is a bit, this should be better, is it better? So, uh, as I said, I will, well, first of all, uh, let me try first to answer, answer a uh, question Alan had. So, if we go PCB, if I could type. PCB way and let's look at this one. So uh, this board itself, so it's it's like uh, PCB with all the components. It has charge controller on itself, a uh, couple of resistors, really nothing much. Plus all these connectors, plus ESP32, plus solar panel. It's fifty dollars US. You could source all of that for much much less for but for example the other issue is if you would have ordered pcbs you would pay i don't know five dollars for five pcbs because you cannot order less than five and then you would uh pay for the shipping i don't know how much but not less than 10 euros i guess plus all the components so the question is is this fifty dollars uh, best option if you want to have hassle-free all the components everything it definitely is the best way but yeah it's also out of stock <laughs> probably sold out <laughs> okay um, I will try to by the way contact PCB and see if and when it will be back in the stock so that's one thing but if we go to let me just briefly kill here something uh, just a second give me a second so I I, I, I I don't want to to, del to need to delete the stream if I show something here. So let me quickly open up this here. Uh, and let's switch the screen here once again. So uh, it's missile wind, I think. Uh, so yeah, the wind sensor, wind direction sensor is 17 euros plus, give or take, plus minus. Uh, wind speed, you can get around 20 euros, so that's 35 plus shipping. The rain bucket is additional 11, so it ends up to, let me do the math quickly, so 20 plus 15 plus 11 so it's about 40 50 euros without without shipping 
So that's not cheap. And if you look, you can get 400 euros weather station. But the big, biggest problem I had is I had Lacrosse 2300 weather station for years. I think since 2000, uh, it's not the same. I did replace it because the outside components did last for about 10 years. So I replaced everything and it didn't fail this time, but I was just sick and tired of how it works. It still is using USB cable. So I had to keep the PC powered 24 seven just so I can have a USB connection to the weather station. Specific version of Linux because the, the, the program for that was also very old. So I had to have a Linux installed. I had to have this special script that would then pull the data from the weather station because the weather station is really stupid. Upload it to the internet, to Weather Underground. And then in Home Assistant, I was pulling data from Weather Underground to receive data from my very own weather station. So it was like, I have weather station sitting 20 meters from the PC and to get data into the home assistant there, I had to go to the old internet. So I was like, like, no, 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 I have to find something else. So I was looking for the weather stations that out of box have local capabilities and that were easy to easy to add to home assistant. And at the end, this was, this was I wouldn't say the only thing that I found, but it was close to be the only thing that 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 is possible to be done. Um, uh, outer case for weather station. Unfortunately, the only way is to 3D print it. I didn't see if anybody is selling. There are there are things like this one, but they do, they they wouldn't fit this weather station. I don't know if anybody is selling them or not, but. If you want to do it <laughs> DIY, you can of course do something that who that who did it. It was like Bit Looney or, or somebody um, that that um, used the IKEA uh, plastic boxes. It's it's not even the same because this is the, let's call it like Stevenson screen, which allows air and the plastic IKEA boxes just keep it dry and uh, keep the water out. So. The only way is to either source it from Etsy. Uh, I know that I, I don't want to sound, this sound like a commercial for the PCB way, but I know that they, for example, uh, are doing 3D printing. You can source not just the boards from them, but you can also source the case from them. But I also do not have any clue on the pricing. I still haven't talked with them about this. And I don't, I have no idea if, if that's expensive or not. I know that I used a lot of plastic. I was using the ABS just to make the case more rigid. And even if you watch carefully, I did manage to break one of the pins, but also I was using so much force on that plastic that I thought that it would break a long time before it really broke. Um, so I, I, I didn't use a kilo of ABS, but it was very close to one kilogram of, of ABS. Um, for me, since I got a new 3D printer that I made last year, it was no problem printing, but yeah, uh, you can do it. I think the orig original author also did it in, a, in a, a PLA, but PLA is not good for the weather outside. It can, due to the direct sunlight, it can break up. So yeah, I would rather go with something something else. Uh, uh, on topic, sorry, yeah, uh, one more thing. For low power devices, you don't use such breakout board. You go bare metal, I know. Uh, yeah, I know, I know, but the, as I said, this is not my device. I'm, 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 I, I really wish that, that I've kept up with what I've self-taught myself around high school, but I didn't. And I just started doing electronics four or five years ago and I'm, I'm trying to understand thing, but I'm still not capable to do anything besides, for example, create a, a PCB that would, you know, just host a couple of ready-made components, for example, ESP plus BME module, then do the, the, the connections, etc. So I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, so I really wish uh, my electronic uh, knowledge for electronics would be would be higher. I, I'm I'm to be honest. Yeah, time is the biggest issue. Ali knows how, where I work, and we have really a lot of work, and I have really a lot of work. 
and uh, work has been steadily increasing. So I don't have that much free time. Um, also the family, I'm trying to help my kid with math, with uh, 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 IT and things like that. So, but I did order something to try and start working with the electronics and start at least on the software part, develop a better uh, knowledge and better firmware. For example, I did feature in a couple of my videos and we talked in streams about the um, Zigbee device. I really like DIY Zigbee stuff, but I'm bad at soldering. So this is something that we will be talking maybe later on in the stream. I will, I, I wanted to, to hear if anybody has any kind of recommendation for a hot plate uh, out of AliExpress, of course, because I want something cheap, but still not burning down my flat. Um, so yeah, but I ordered development kit for uh, Zigbee to MQT Zigbee. I ordered development kit for Zigbee and I will be trying to to tweak some firmers because there are some firmers, but there is also source code and um, firmers only work on one types of the boards and I cannot source those boards anymore. So I want to try and convert that, um, that firmware to work with the other types of board. And so yeah, th this is again, I'm very limited in, 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 in terms of What's going on? So, what was my uh, plan for today's stream? Cheers. Oh, sponsor of this stream is Spar as budget sugar-free sour ananas or sour pineapple. Yeah, it's not. It's not sponsored, but this is something that I do every stream. I try to find a different taste. Cheers. Also, if you if you've seen me on the Twitter. You know that I have in a, a stock a beer also depends on how the stream goes also. So yeah. Uh, so what will be the topic of today? I've already built. This is one of my really project that I've been I've been working and having by same time. Okay, bye. I have to go and pick up my teen daughter around 1 a.m. So yeah, I'm very happy. Uh, so yeah, okay. Distractions, distractions, distractions. Uh, I'm blind. Look at this. This is something new. Today we will be working on ESP Home software for high grow uh, plant sensor. I already have working version of ESP home software, but I want to do it from the scratch. I'm not happy how it works. And I think that some of the things that I've learned while doing this weather station can be implemented here and that it would work much better. So I like them. I have, I have, uh, uh, I have um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of those Hygro boards. Six of them are currently running on my version of ESP Home. But as I said, there are some issues. One of the biggest issues was over the air updates. So I want to, you know, use knowledge from the weather station project and implement it here. And I also want to tweak out the awake time and things like that. So we will be working today live on this one here. Calibrate weather station, Stepan, that's a tough one. So it's currently not calibrated. Most of those sensors, for example, temperature, humidity, and pressure, let's go to here. Let me, whoa, this looks funky. Let me kill this camera overhead camera here. I don't have over camera, overhead camera on the stream deck, so I, I have to manually turn it off. Um, let's look at, for example, DHT, not DHT, we are using BME.
Um, yeah. We are not doing that. Let me just see. It has to have. Or something, or something, update interval, sensor filters. I think that there is a way to use calibration or sampling. Name unit of measure, device class, state class, accuracy filters. I think that you can use filters. So, yeah. You can use filters to play with the calibration of each of the sensors. But this is really pain pain in the backside to, to do. I haven't done it. Um, I haven't done it on any of my sensors. So you can have five sensors, each one showing the different temperature. Because on the other hand, I'm also not that much interested in accurate data in terms of, you know, it has to be up to decimal point accurate. I'm just looking for rough values to know. For example, today it was two degrees in the morning when I went outside. So I just want to know if it's two, 10 or 20 degrees. <laughs> so I can, I can uh, depending on the outside temperature, dress myself differently. Also, since it's not calibrated, it's, it can be out of whatever. Uh, it can always show two degrees hotter or two degrees, two degrees cooler tem uh, temperature outside. You can then play with it uh, you you can then all the values will be uh, offset meaning even if it's uh, plus 20 it will be two degrees hotter or colder even if it's on the other hand minus two it can be two degrees offset either up or down so uh, they usually don't need collaboration only offset check what this shows it check with your weather provider and yeah uh, for the weather, for I was looking for the temperature and and humidity here. The pressure has the cap, you, you, for the pressure you can do that and you can play with the is it um, uh, is it uh, how it's called? Uh, oh my God, how it's called? Um, let's go back. It was here. It was here. Uh, sea level pressure or local depend. So it, is it calculating your current um, height or not? So yeah. It is because for temperature, I know from the 3D printers, then you have to have in the, you have to have different, it, it's also not, or usually not linear. So you have to have a couple of different measurements saying if it reads this, the temperature is this. If it reads this, the temperature is this. And if it reads this, the temperature should really be this one. So it's recalculating based on that. So, but it's not that simple, especially if, if it's not, if it's not linear. But on the other hand, I don't want to play with that one. But on the other hand, I will play with the wind sensor and I will play with the rain sensor. For the rain sensor, it's also not an issue because you can use, you know, glass of water. You have two deciliters of water. You pour it in slowly into the sensor and you measure pulses. So you know that exactly, exactly two centimeters, uh, sorry, two deciliters of water has passed and it had that many clicks. Uh, for the wind sensor, I'm wa waiting for the handheld uh, anemometer. So I will be using I will be using that handheld anemometer to recalculate current uh, multiplier and try and get it as close as possible. The problem here with the with the wind and problem for the pressure, as 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 Zigrid, Zigrid said, yeah, uh, for the pressure. Uh, I can use data that is provided by the local weather, weather service for the wind and for the rain. I cannot because there is a, there can be a bigger difference in the quantity of rain falling between me and the and the uh, weather center or weather station by the hydrometer uh, how it's called Met Office something like that. Uh, so. That's 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 why I want to calibrate that as close as possible. And since currently my wind sensor is partially shaded or protected, I cannot even roughly use the data from the uh, meteorological office to to see if my readings are accurate or not. Because I can see 
on the other side of the street, the trees are, you know, like tilting 20 degrees. And on the back side where the wind meter is or the anemometer is, there is not that much wind. Melting ice in the water. Yeah. That, I know, I know, yeah. As I said, I'm currently, I'm currently, I was really surprised, by the way, um, uh, the weather station has two sensors, one is in the box and the other one is this DA uh, Dallas sensor that is dangling and it's much closer to the floor and it's definitely always in the shade. And I always had about two degrees difference while the, and the D Dallas sensor was two degrees higher than the one in the box. I was, when I, when I was assembling that, my presumption was that, okay, this one in the box, because there is all that electronics, there is a solar panel, you know, heating up the box, etc., etc. This one will always be a bit higher than the Dallas one, which will always be in the shade, always be protected, shielded, etc. And currently I have opposite readings, so yeah. So as I said, I, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't um, still calibrate it because I want to, to finish ironing out that problems that I had with the code there. So, uh, let's go to Home Assistant. And by the way, does anybody see anything strange here? Yeah, I'm running beta 3 version and I'm still not sure if I will be I know that some 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 people hate hate them um, unfortunately when we were talking on the stream a couple of weeks ago I did mention that while I hate those types of videos they bring a lot of views and a lot of new subscribers and although I know that I will never be Mr. Beast and have 100 million subscribers. You always want to see growth because, you know, if it stops growing, if you don't see the, the, the number of subscribers or number of views going up, you see, you, you think that you did something wrong, that something is not bad. You, you, after, even if you ignore it for some time, you at the end, you, yes, Jan, you at the end feel like, um, feel like, Al hi Neil, I haven't seen you. Uh, you feel like there is a pressure for you to you know keep keep going. And those videos that I've been recording since December, this is the either new release or featuring better release. So you get new release video on the day on the day the new release comes out. So as as I'm releasing currently videos uh, on Wednesday, the new release is always on Wednesday. So on Wednesday, people have a um, video covering new features in Home Assist. I'm still not sure if I'm, I'm really, you know, split there uh, if I will do the next one or not, but there are really some nice features. I still haven't had time to look at everything and change log and everything, but I really like this new thing here. So even if you are not just like browsing now, you can see, oh, there is a new update, but that's not all. Um, the update screen also changed. So if you click on this, you get much nicer, in my opinion, screen showing you what is your current version, what is the latest available version, you can skip and you can install, which is something that is so, so, so simple, but I think that it's like 100 times better than it was before. But yeah, I didn't want to show you that. I wanted to go to ESP Home. Uh, so we will start with the, we will start with the, uh, we will start with the new device, continue, do I have to specify everything? Yeah, I have to, um, I grow. No, we will not do it like that. We will do it like this. Just a second. Yep. Okay. I was afraid that my secrets file will open. I have tendency of leaving secrets file open. 
let's go to ESP home, let's create new file and let's call it high growth. Yeah. Okay, so now we don't have to go through the setup process, it will be available here as a empty file. Yeah, I've seen Jan, um, in regard to the uh, once a week in short these days, which is, I built ESP and ESP to weather station boards. Oh, so you, you did this, Neil, you did the same, that one, the same project from the open green, whatever it's called. Winter days. Yeah, um, my problem here is as I'm still playing with the board and I'm using two, three over the air updates a day. And I also sometimes forget that I put device in a don't sleep mode. And it can be like 15 minutes before I, oh yeah, I, I put it in an over the air update. So um, I was really draining the battery, especially on the rainy days. We had a couple of days now and they were not able to recharge. From the last month, when I was testing, I never had any issue. It was always recuperating or recharging enough for it to keep the same charge throughout the week. Uh, but as I said, I'm still, I don't still have good reference data. The second thing, even the author that, that suggested that is that I've seen that people have replaced the solar panel and used almost two times uh, bigger solar panel. Some also improved on the case. So you have two versions of the, of the top uh, part of the case. One that is uh, tilted a lot more. And I, uh, and I think that those that had larger plates at the end opted for more tilted, more tilted uh, cover. And it helped with the, with the battery life. So, but still, <laughs> no, no, uh, 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 today for anybody who is here, anybody from Croatia today that is here uh, knows why I will complain today about weather. So last week it was like 22 degrees last week, not, not Friday, but week before this, it was like 22 degrees. One day in the morning it was cold, so I had still my winter jacket is like a large fluffy one you went out it was cold in the morning and then you have 22 degrees and people like look at you and said are you nuts today we had snow 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 in april snow <laughs> yeah i know i know i know sorry sorry will not complain but today snow i woke up like snow because usually at this time really we have 20 plus degrees and yeah we don't have that much weather so we don't have that but, but to be honest most of the times when i was in the uk i had great weather most of the times okay i was also in london so london is a bit southern parts of the uk but most of the times i was in the uk and i did travel a lot to uk before all of this so yeah okay um i've written down a couple of pointers for me not to forget so what we have to do and i will also open in this screen oh my god i have so many screens Ah, I've now closed screen, which I shouldn't close. I'm bad at this. Ah, okay. It's like first time streaming. Uh, nope, nope. Thank <laughs> you. 
Um, sorry, uh, my screen just... I managed to... I'm not good at this. Uh, where is it now? It's here. I will copy the code that I've done previously, but we will completely demolish all I have here. So we will be leaving this part here. We will see what we will do here. Logger will be left. This part will be mostly gone. Let me delete. Okay, so what I have to do, we have to leave substitutions. The reason for that is that I want to reuse this code in all the other boards. Uh, this I have there. Are, let's see if we can do something here. Let's see if we can do it like this. And maybe not use this here and let me remove everything else so what's now complaining esp home section is missing esp home section esp home section and in esp home section we have to use this one here but we'll be also using Apart from the hmm. where is it complaining about this one here? Yeah, it's complaining about this one here. I hate it. So th there are a couple of there are a couple of things that that really frustrate about about the ESP home if we if we uh, use I want to I want to create device that can have longer than one word name because plants usually have longer names than the uh, plants usually have longer names than the than the than one word so for, for example this is one is chef Flera. To, something is missing here. Here, blop. Let me check what is the full name. Arboricola. Yeah, it's missing a. So the plant name is Cheflera arboricola. And if you use underscore in device name and use this as a MDNS name, it will complain because you are not supposed to use underscores in the name. On the other hand, if I, for example, put minus here, it will work, it will not complain about it, but then you have issue when you are creating, when you're using this same uh, device name for creating sensors in Home Assistant, because sensors in Home Assistant must not use um, dash, they must use underscores. So um, that's why I, created or I've put here in substitutions both device name which is then used as a device name and upper device name which is used to create name of the sensor inside home assistant in substitutions I will leave awake for five seconds or we can even lower it to for example three seconds and let's put for testing here sleep for one minute Okay, so now we have defined substitutions, we have defined ESP home. Uh, let me go and see in the um, solar weather. Uh, let's leave it like this. From the solar weather, I will copy one thing, and this is the on boot part of the code. On boot means that when the boot, when the board boots, it will then uh, execute script called consider deep sleep. And in order for this to work, we of course need to add consider deep sleep. This script will go at the end. Uh, 
let's just make sure our names match. So we have awake duration, which is three seconds. Uh, it's looking for the binary sensor and deep sleep, enter deep sleep. So it's missing a part where deep sleep is defined. And in order to fix it, we will copy this script here. Ah, come on, align this correctly. So this is a deep sleep. We will rename this here. So now, uh, when device boots, it goes and checks, uh, it boots, uh, runs the script consider deep sleep, and this is the script called consider deep sleep, which is cute. It is delayed for whatever is awake duration, so three seconds, if the condition of binary sensor is on, and we still have to create this binary sensor, then it is uh, logging this and the error here is we do not have enabled log so let's enable log mm, is it log or logging logger neither okay so this part we have done so we now have everything up to this point we just have to create a binary sensor and for that we will be using binary sensor from home assistant and it can go here in the sensors section uh sensors section the sleep section we will later in this sensor section add other sensors and we still need uh to fix this platform home assistant it is missing api and this one is script script section uh host name must be one from 66 three characters fellow characters yeah for host name letters the digits and hyphen no uh, yeah that's that's right Siegfried. and i don't know if you understand what my issue is i cannot just simply reuse this device name later on or use for example uh, upper device name to convert it in in theory if i would be good in programming or if i would be good in stealing parts of the code and i am good at stealing parts of the code but i always try to to list everybody who i, who I get parts of the code it you can you i could in in theory create it in such a way that um uh, here i check if there is a underscore and remove then the underscore host name is not kind sense yeah uh -huh. so what i could do in th so what i could do in theory is as i said work with this here and then check if there is underscore and remove the underscore and also use this device name as also hmm or or i could completely remove this one but this is something that i really have to look how to convert so instead of having device name like this to use the upper uh, device name and then convert uh, uppercase to lowercase or no you, you said the host name is not case sense so i we can use we can still leave the we can still leave this one here and then we just remove the space uh for this one here so which is a good idea and but I'm, I'm not that good to do this uh, now. Uh, there is still issue with this one. We need to define API. Um, what's wrong with this one? Requires component network. Great. Uh, so now we have to define also the network. Let me see pin. let's see what you get um while well, you copy it if it allows you to copy it so yeah um 
ESP Home, name is device name. What is the difference for if this one works? What is the difference if I, for example, put brackets here or not? What is the difference? And then you also have like this. But it's complaining, it's a valid character. Oh, it's uh, not this bracket, sorry, it's, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm blind. I should put glasses here. What is the difference of using... So, in theory, I can have... Something like this? No, I cannot. No, I cannot. Hmm. Yeah, I still have to play with this one. When you use ESP Home and Web Server, I cannot connect it. Uh, so you have the, you, are you using fixed IP address for the uh, ESP home? Have you tried accessing it through the fixed IP or are you using MDNS and host name? I, I try to avoid using host names and preferably I also use for most of the devices also the fixed IP address. Um, so let's go. Device name, platform, okay. I'm using different platform, that's no issue. Host name is device name. And device name is Atom M Switch S1. Brackets, make sure spaces are understood. Okay, we'll play this. Uh, let me first add. Uh, let me first add. Let me first add the part with the with the Wi-Fi network, and I'll copy it from the code previously, just to make sure that I use the same. Uh, IP address. So Wi Fi is here. In theory, what I want to do one, two, three, four, five. Nothing to change under this line. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, let's check what's going on here. It says that. What now? A key is not... Oh, okay, how it's called here. I have to check out. Uh, let me just quickly go to... Let me quickly go to secrets file. Let's save this and see how I call secrets here. SSID and... I didn't use I didn't use unified names on my recording setup and main setup, but this will be fixed now. Close. Edit. Now it's not complaining anymore. Yeah, I agree. War one one two, you will see it better than yeah, definitely because this one is more visible. I did notice also one thing. Um, let's change it to here. Can you see? It's it's too small. Let me see if I can do anything. To it's already hundred and let's put it two hundred percent. This is better. I hope. Okay, so let's check. We now have working 
but it's really not doing anything. So we have name, upper device name, which will be used for sensor. We have awake duration, three seconds, sleep duration, one minute. We have defined network. This is the uh, IP address. This is the gateway subnet and I've disabled fast connect. Uh, I don't know what your thoughts are. Uh, but would then, would then, if you are using let me just find it. So your device name is Atom M switch minus uh, S01, if I'm not mistaken. If I would use that, then the sensor in Home Assistant would be called like that. And I want to have a bit like, I don't want to customize the sensor. I want to have, you know, first letter, uh, capital letter, following letters are small letters, space, etc. So for that, I don't know if there is a way to do conversions from this upper device name to this something like this. That's my that's my thought. Uh, where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Where are we? So this part, yeah. So I was talking about fast connect. Okay, uh, most of us usually complicate complicate stuff for ourselves. So I've complicated and I have a couple of access points um, that use the same SSID, which allows roaming, but for the ESP boards, fast connect can then be issue. So if you have two access points and device that is in the middle of those two access points, and uh, you are using fast connect, it will not try and see if there are two devices with two different MAC addresses. It will just try to connect to whatever it hears first. And that can mean that it is trying to connect to the access point that is that has worse signal than the one that it still didn't see. So that's why I've disabled fast connect. Yeah, I know, but yeah, I think that that you didn't. The problem is, for example, here, if I would use, if this would be sensor, it would be sensor dot, uh, sorry, the name of the sensor would be, I want it to be and if I would use something like this, the name of the sensor would be and I would have to go through Home Assistant and fix this, put this capital letter, capital letter, remove this, etc. So that's why I'm currently using upper and lower uh, device name. That's the reason. As I said, there is a way i know that there is a way in 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 in, in for arduinos to to you know convert this part or the normal capitalization or normal letters to the to the lower letters remove space or convert space to uh, underscore etc but i currently am not doing that okay let's See. So we now have everything and it's work and it's not working. If we would compile this, what it would do, it would connect to the Wi-Fi and go to sleep. And that's it. Uh, we can try doing that. Let's press save. Let's press install. Plug into this computer. Oh, my god, this will take time. I forgot I'm on my recording setup. Oh. Well, we have time. Well, we have time until it compiles. First of all, it's very slow. And second, since I'm not using HTTPS, I have to download the file locally. If I can flash it like this. When we flash it for the first time after that, we will be able to use over the air updates. Uh, also, it will, oh, by the way, before we do that, 
this device is currently empty, so while it is while it is uh, compiling, and if it would compile, no, no, I was not meaning I was not meaning the sensor dot. I was meaning the how it's called uh, user friendly name. I'm aware that it would be it it would always be. I'm aware that it would always be. Uh, Oh my god, this looks terrible. Okay, so we have 800 milliamp hours battery. And I wanted to check... I wanted to check... It's empty. Empty as in the board is not working. So... 2.77 I will short something out get glasses how it's now why it was 277 Come on, sit still. Yeah, 2.76. So I had question in the video how I was calculating how I was high I how I was calculating percentage of the battery. I will now check when I plug in what is the voltage uh, reported by ESP Home and uh, let me just write this down. Nice, something fell. So the battery is 2.76 volts. And I will compare it with the state reported in uh, uh, ESP Home. And then I will be using that state to calculate when the battery is at zero, meaning that the board doesn't work at that. I'm, this is not scientific. The board, those boards really need three volts, but they can sometimes go under, be under voltage. So yeah. Maybe, but this is ready-made board and I'm working with what I have. I'm not I'm not going to work with anything else but, but funny how this board still looks great uh, I've also bought the film or the spray that you use to create film on the board so maybe I will protect just in case this one uh, yeah it's still compiling it will never finish we probably the stream will finish before it it stops compiling it's terrible so I will be using the voltage that is reported back in home assistant both when the battery is completely full and the battery when the device that's why I also disconnected the battery so we can now work uh, of the USB cable and not charge the battery and then I will use those minimum maximum values for that it's it's far from perfect but I just want to know you know it's if, if it, the battery is close to be dead or not um, I'm currently using when I was using Pessar's firmware the batteries were up working for about 100 plus days now with the last firmware I created which was not that good they lasted about month month and a half and I'm, I'm really hoping to you know 
be able to improve battery life for, for example, to 60 days and, and keep them happy for 60 days. And I think that, you know, recharging and how I'm recharging, I don't have, I, where is it? I think it's not here, it should be here. So I have very large power bank that has two outputs and I have those two magnetic cables. And what I do is just like, the battery there connect a couple of hours later disconnect go to second so it takes me a oh no, couple of hours to to refill all the six six sensors hi johnny i know i i don't care about um i don't care first of all um when i bought these batteries here uh they are 800 million powers I bought 20 pieces, so I still have in stock to replace all the batteries at least two times. If they last a year, I'm okay with that. The price for that was, it was not that that much, so skiing, snowing in you can <laughs> enjoy your weather. It's not as bad as here, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> So Johnny, oh, what you missed? Okay, okay, this one downloaded finally. Download the project. Uh, let's plug this. Oh my God, let's plug this here. Press connect. Let's turn this close, connect, COM16. You don't see this. Why don't you see this? Because this paper, yeah. Connect, install, choose file install uh you're right you're right that's why i always say please don't do what i do uh it is because the batteries as i said the batteries that i'm using have been salvaged from the laptops those batteries were either dead and I revived some of them, which means that they are really bad choice for this project, or that those batteries were really abused, meaning that they have a couple of hundred, if not, if not thousand cycles and should be recycled. But for most of the things that I'm testing, I'm using, you know, not that good batteries. Um, when I will be replacing the batteries, when this device will be going out in a permanent location, um, I will be replacing them with brand new batteries and there will be some, some safeguards in the future in the code. For when the batteries, LiPo batteries drop below some certain thresholds, most of the chargers stop working. Uh, the boards themselves should have uh, over discharge protection or under voltage protection, meaning that they shut off the device or put permanent device to sleep when it goes below a certain voltage. Because if the lithium, uh, lithium batteries go below that voltage, they can be damaged. Uh, although it's less common for uh, depleted batteries to go kaboom and, and create uh, a fire. If they are discharged too quickly, they can definitely heat up and create fire. On the other hand, overcharging the batteries, uh, both in terms of speed of charging, meaning how many amps you put in the charger and in the battery through that charger, and going above certain voltage can result in overheating uh, battery inflating and battery exploding which is really 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 bad so you should really i know um i have about 
50 uh, lipos in my house and let me quickly show you something which was not supposed to be for this stream but since we are only talking about that i know that you will go but hopefully you will catch it up later on in the recording just a second I'm back. Um, this was my first Surface. This is Surface Pro 4, which I bought very, very cheaply. Um, and I bought it, it was, it was like a test device or, or demo device. And when I bought it, it was one month before the expiry of warranty. And I bought it for 200 euros or 150 euros. So it was not used that much, but it was sitting and the warranty was out. And if you know Surface devices, without warranty, if anything happens, what you can do is you can throw it out. So I bought it, as I said, for less than 200 euros. And I've used it a lot until this happened. I don't know if you can see it. Let me switch the screen. Come on, be smart. Do you see it? And do you see something silver inside? So, um, yeah, I'm crazy. I also have video on this because when it happened, it happened that the battery started inflating. And since it was heating a lot and this surface doesn't have active cooling, it has only passive cooling. So it was not blowing the air out. It was really keeping the temperature inside this surface. And I don't recommend doing this, but I'm, I'm crazy and I did it. So I just pried it open more, I bought new replacement battery for it and replaced the battery and then used it for another, uh, reused it for another year or two. And then once again, the battery inflated. So I now have it like this. I can still turn it on and, and use it. But since the battery is now pushing the screen here, it starts seeing ghost events here. And that's why I'm not using it anymore. But this is perfectly working device, but it's also a great example of what can happen uh, if batteries are abused. Batteries abused meaning that either working only as, uh, either working, uh, are you constantly pulling too much power and pulling a lot of power from the battery, resulted in battery failing, resulted in the battery inflating, and the next step after battery is inflated, it, it can start smoking and, and burning. So, yeah, uh, I still didn't throw this device. I, I don't know what I'll do. Problem with the screen is, problem with the screen is that it's using something that I cannot replicate and the controller is on the main board. So yeah, I'm still not sure if maybe I will replace, but I was reading today that there is a, a developer version for the uh, Chrome OS that can be installed on any device. So my idea maybe is to replace once again the battery. I have, I never replaced the glue on the screen, replace the glue and then install Chrome OS on it. It should work if, if the touch screen, I am, if I'm able to use touch screen, it would be, it, it, it's perfect device. And it will be for browsing the web, tablet, for example, home assistant as you mentioned screen it would be really really great device but this is what happens when 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 lithium ion batteries fail and this is not the worst case this is just maybe expensive case but it's not the worst case yeah i, I then i got a new surface surface 7 and i replaced surface 7 last week because Okay, so uh, let's go back to, yeah, 
I do remember. It was uh, yeah, Galaxy Notes, and they had problem before that with other models, but they didn't they didn't um, burst into flames. They were just inflating and breaking the case, something like that. I think that even I, I cannot um, I cannot remember it. I think that even the Apple had issues with with inflating batteries, but it was really. Yeah, but it's different device, so I cannot compare this with iPad because iPad is a toy and this is a PC, sorry. <laughs> oh, by the way, oh, I have something new. You will be definitely all so happy that I've installed this. But you have iPad and this is a PC. I know that you all came just for this. Just for this. I can even do Doctor Who. I can even Doctor Who do. Um, I'm, I'm, I really wish I had a Mac. I still do not have it. And, and, uh, I think that I don't need it. Um, I really don't need, but I, I don't need even this, but I bought myself <laughs> Oculus Quest. So um, I bought buy a lot of stuff that I don't need. So um, let me just switch the screen back to where we left. So um, I don't need a, a MacBook, but I think that it would be much easier for me to move everything out of, in terms of editing video, recording stuff move out of this PC and move it to the to the Mac and then also have the ability to move to to edit that uh, on the go and not only sitting fanboy not only sitting uh, at the desk oh I promise Doctor Who let me just find Doctor Who I love the, the I don't I have in, this installed for a year and I never never once bothered I really love this one I'll find you the doctor I'll find you and you will die. It's great. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I should start stream streaming the games and then. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I agree. I definitely agree. I definitely agree. Yeah. Uh, let's go back to the to the ESP home. By the way, uh, Johnny, do you have? Any suggestion? This is something that I wanted to talk towards the end of the stream, but we have probably done nothing today and we are approaching the, let's call it end. I do have any recommendation for something really, let me open here. I was looking for something really, 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 really small. Uh, oh, how it's called. I don't know how to type. I was looking for something really, really, really small, but not this small. This is this looks like you know, I have TS100. It's working great, but I'm having issues with soldering and desoldering uh, Zigbee modules. And, I, and last time I did, I I soldered three of the modules. You know, I was like hype. Oh my god, they look great! And I soldered them upside down, meaning that you know I just rotated the board 180. And this soldering with the hot gun, if you have multiple large pads, was such a pain. And now I'm looking for something small that I can use for both soldering, low quantity, but also, you know, reworking boards, you know, removing components. Because I also, I also re killed at least a couple of Zigbee modules because not all pads were heated enough and I pulled it too hard and then broke the pins. The standard blue one, this one here. Yeah, I was, I was looking. Most of the thing, most of the shops are selling something like something like this one. Me too. It's not good for rework, so it would be bad to you know just like I need to remove components. It wouldn't work. Yeah, I was afraid of that because I have, I don't have it here. I, I placed them somewhere. I now have a ton of modules that I've soldered upside down. I was like, no, hyped, everything working, 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 and yeah. 
Uh, the problem with these ones, they are too small. Uh, so you mean th that one that is big, but in the middle only has 10 by 10 plate. I've seen it. I've seen it somewhere. Uh, reflow. Yeah, no, Owen. Reflow plate. No, I don't want something like this one here. This one is 10 by 10. This is used for, I've seen this one always mentioned in the LCD department. Unexpected maker. I will look at that one. Unexpected maker. Okay, I will look at what he has on his streams. I forgot what he has. Because I, I need, you know, you know, something that I don't care about the other stuff. All the other stuff I can either dissolve with soldering iron or dissolder with the hot air gun, but for the, for the, for the, ICs or for these Zigbee modules or who knows tomorrow uh, ESP modules maybe I simply cannot you know they have pins on three sides they have really large pins and yeah thank you for that let's go back to where we were we were here what's this I was like what's this okay so last we did here last we have so last we did here was flash this one here let me see integrations why is not visible here let me just check on my other system check it out no it's not still it's not visible here okay uh it's not visible here it's not visible there let's go back to esp home uh let's see if we wake it up by resetting it what is the what is the wake time uh okay first Let's check how we call this one. We don't want this binary sensor to be called Solar WS Prevent Sleep. We will call it this here. Can we use it like this? It will now, uh, it has this inside. Come on. Yeah, again, problem. Let's leave it for now for underscore and I will later on work with the code on how to do it like this. And then we want to have this one here. Binary sensor is on this one here and we have to fix the name this. So now we are once again using device name to create, uh, to check a home assistant for input boolean called whatever this name here is, prevent deep sleep. And for that, we need to create that in home assistant. Let's just validate it and then I will copy it, copy it. nice thing about this that if you validate it you get the full name so let's go to configuration close let's go to configuration let's go to here helpers add helper it's not button it's oh how i love uh, i don't know if you've seen this is the as i was mentioning this is the beta version You can build your own with one of these. Go to site. I know, I no, 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 I don't want to, I don't want to. I want to have something, I want to have, you know, something, uh, something that's working. I don't want to buy. I, when you were, when you were talking about the expected maker, did you, you we were, were you talking about the, the one that is he's selling the controllers and hot plates for the ovens or the one that he's using 
I know that he has, I know that he has uh, boards for them and, and he's creating those controllers for the uh, rifle ovens. Let's go back, let's go back, let's go back. Oh my God, how it's called? It's uh, toggle. And it will be once again, sleep off, create. Input boolean and the name of the yeah yeah I know okay 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 um ESP home yeah 3D printer heat plate although although the ones that I'm, no, the ones that I'm using also the heaters. I'm using Kenovo heater, but I think it's limited at 120 volts something. Yeah, he's selling just for ovens. Yeah. Okay, so what do I need here? I need to create. Go to overview in the plant section. In the plants, and I see here store. This is where, what happens when you have when you have recording set up. We will add entity called this one here. Save. It's currently off, and we will set it to on state. Hmm. <laughs> nice. Let's go to ESP Home and see if in one minute this will boot up and be available. Oh, uh, I did show he, this on the beginning of the stream. This is the open MQTT gateway also on 433. Uh, I didn't see any traffic so far. <laughs> I'm, I'm definitely going to buy 866 or is it 868 megahertz version, but two pieces because I think in EU, EU you should have You got a smoke sensor event with the state alarm. Now, if you don't know whose sensor is that, just ignore it. If you can sense the smoke by the nose, then yeah. Um, so this is the board that I bought more than a year ago and I didn't know what to do. And one day I was like browsing the internet, found the open MQTT gateway, compiled it, did have to change a bit of code because the code is now newer than this board it's working i can sniff the traffic but i didn't see anything if you hear the sirens then it's bad uh this one is still not waking up and it should wake up it should wake up but it's not waking up Hmm. Hmm. Edit. So we have awake duration, three seconds. Let's put awake duration, 30 seconds. Let's install. Manual install. Let's use legacy format. Okay. Let's 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 kill this overhead cam. You don't need to see the board now. Hmm. It's so slow. It's so 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 slow. I was thinking on getting either yellow or Odroid or something like that. 
but I don't know if I would be using it for the main setup or if I would be using it for the recording setup. I was even considering to go for the recording setup on that box. I'm pretty happy with how it, everything works on the on the main setup on the Synology. So yeah. Hmm. This is so slow. So what else is new? Um yeah, I've I've posted the question on the Discord server. I don't know who 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 is on the Discord server, who has seen it or not. Let me go there and uh, read it. So I'm working on, I've, I'm preparing to work on. I started working on one future project, and there are a couple of things that I really would like to to have your out, uh, input. So if you have Discord, please drop me uh, your line there. So. The topic is local only voice assistance. It has to have two functionalities. One is uh, speech to text. So it has to have a wake up word, which can potentially, or I would prefer it to be customizable. Then it has to do the transcription, meaning it has to convert speech to text. Uh, and of course, the second option is to use text to speech. So, if, if there is any, any need for output or answer, that it would then do text to speech. And I'm, I've started working on it's not my project. <coughs> Sorry, no, it's not my project, but I found something. I started working on it, and I'm currently waiting for the waiting for some of devices to arrive, as I don't want and. I've, I've seen this project a couple of years already ago. There were a couple of projects at the time, but one of them was bought by Sonoff and killed off, which is something that happens often, that companies buy good software and then kill it and kill any open source part of that project. Um, so the limitation is languages. There are not a lot of smart assistants that support creation languages. In terms of speech to text, there are more that support text to speech, but none of them support smart functionality in creation language. So, even this one wouldn't work in creation. It does support I don't know, English, German, French, Russian, Portuguese, something like that. So, there is a list of, I don't know, 10 languages that are supported. But I'm looking really, I want to understand first what is the concern of people? Why would you go for a local only smart assistant or or whatever it is called and hey hi arnold nice seeing you and why would why would why why are people i wouldn't say afraid but why 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 people want to avoid using cloud connected uh, cloud connected smart speakers um i know most the 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 buzzword is privacy but what does really privacy mean if for example you have youtube with account you don't have privacy everything you do do is stored at least for for some time and every time you surf somebody can see that data when i say somebody is it, it, it's not just somebody um so my question is really why are you or why is somebody looking for local assistant Second, what would be the, the bare minimums and also some key features that are people looking in smart local assistant? Is it like, like turn the light on, off, give me the weather information, but once again, let's keep the weather from data I have, not from the cloud, or is it okay to go and ask uh, on the web what is the weather and then retrieve that answer? So, yeah. Uh, hi, René, bravo. <laughs> You're not late. You're never late. It's called fashionably late. So the, my, my reason, my, I'm, I'm trying to see, you know, uh, in what direction to go with that project, what topics to try to cover, because it will not be possible for me to cover everything. And I don't want to do, you know, like, like Game of Thrones, seven seasons of 
this project. I want to cover it, for example, in two videos. In one video to cover the main setup, um, external speaker setup, uh, basic setup to get, you know, lights working. And then maybe a, a second video where we would work on customize, intense, uh, controlling, you know, sentences, um, things like that. So that's why I'm really, really interested to hear. And, and I said here, it's better to it's better to do it over the uh, Discord than here because you don't want to type that much here. Okay, so we have file that's been downloaded. Let's browse, open, and let's flash it. Fashionably late. So how have you doing? How how have you been doing, Rene? Yeah, I'm missing. I'm I'm also missing prevents. Yeah, I'm, I have to change something in the code. I see. Prevent prevent is off. Got state off. Didn't we change state here to on? Hmm, let's check it here. Uh, so blah, 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 this part is okay. Prevent sensor from deep sleep. Skipping sleep, I prevent deep sleep. This should be okay. Close. And the board is now sleeping once again. And if we go to overview, plants, it's on. Hmm. Why is it? Well, let's go back and let's look at the code. So, on boot, we are checking consider deep sleep. If we go to consider this deep sleep, it's queued with the delay 30 seconds now, and it's checking if the binary sensor is on and the binary sensor is the one we created just a couple of minutes ago, and it is on. Then it is skipping sleep. Oh, Shh. let's pretend nothing, ha let's pretend nothing happened. The only problem is we have to, oh my God, compile it once again. Yeah, my mistake, my bad. I forgot about doing this. Uh, so I left a bit of code that is used, that I've added to the weather station that is capturing triggers by the GPIO pin where the rain bucket is. And if it sees the activity on that pin, it then uses it then uses uh, it then uses it to wake up shortly and then go back to sleep. But the problem there is that we are ignoring this script from that part of the command. So now it should be much much better, and yay! It will be compiled very quickly. Come on, come on, come on! That's nice to hear, Anna. Compile down, download, it's downloaded. Let's go to Flasher, browse, select new file, open, Flash SP. Flash ESP. Let's do it like this. Disconnect, reconnect, Flash ESP. The sponsor of today's the sponsor of today's stream is not Spar, sugar-free sour pineapple pineapple. Okay, so the rub it's trying to connect once again. Why? Hmm. 
we did update latest firmware it connected not scheduling deep sleep beginning deep sleep it is once again reading the state are we cool? that's because we haven't added the device and it doesn't know what was the IP address just a second IP address was this one here submit it will now fail Probably. I will then try to reset the device. Yep. Submit. Let's try and catch when the device is awake. Authentication failed. Yeah, I, I really hate this ubiquity. Since I got it, I always have some kind of issues. Oh my god. Nice. So finally we have connection between the home assistant here and the and let's add it. Configuration, integration, this here, one device, one entity, prevent sleep, add to dashboard, add to plants, next, add to dashboard. Why is it not registering this switch here? You see, it's prevented oh so it did register at one point it did register at one point this let's switch it like this once again and see if on the next boot and it should boot every minute so we will not be needing to wait for too long it should then get state on and it should prevent it from going to deep sleep. Wow, we only have about 20 minutes of stream time left and I didn't do anything. I was just talking whole stream. Oh, it's up. Let's see if it can connect. Oh, I hate it. This is the biggest issue I'm having with ESP power devices. They simply cannot connect. And the credentials are not wrong. So at one point, it, it will keep keep showing this error, authentication failure, and then it would restart the Wi-Fi. So you see, it went to deep sleep without it being connected. And if I would shorten the time for the board to be up, uh, and it's now been... So the awake time is now currently 30 seconds and I want awake time to be two seconds. And how can I be sure that in these two seconds it will manage to connect to this stupid ubiquity network? And I really hate it. I really hate it. Hmm. reset device and, and hope it will be now connecting uh, once again oh I hate it and since it cannot connect to the Wi-Fi network it cannot pull the keep on state and it cannot stay awake and if it cannot stay awake we cannot play with it it's really 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 when I didn't have ubiquity 
I didn't have these problems, but I wanted to improve my network and I bought the latest Ubiquiti access points, Unify 6, so I get much better speeds. Now I get much better speeds, but it's not working as it should. Yay! Oh my god. Let's reset the board once again. So, um, the problem with this is because of this, I had very long wake up time for the board. And because of that, of course, it reduced the battery life uh, between charges. And also, uh, I was missing data. So, I, for example, had device that would, that would, yeah. Uh, I had I had a device that would deplete the battery completely and it would in a two weeks only send three batches of, of data and this is this is this was partially fixed in one of the firmware updates for unify and I don't know why once again it's not working as it should I really do not know uh, view logs let's go here in ESP home I cannot do anything I can try and and use this fast connect and enable it let's just create firmware just in case but it will not help as far as I know and the credentials are okay because just five minutes ago it did normally connect to the network I really hate this uh Kema, how are you doing? Let's reboot it. Let's reboot it. Yay! Got state off. How did you get state off? State on. Yes, you should be in state on. Okay. That's finally, 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 finally. Okay, close this and we should now see the board on. Yay. Okay. Uh, are you using Unify 6 or Unify 5? I have Unify 6 and I see a lot of people complaining for IoT devices, especially DSP boards on the on the Unify community with the um, uh, uh, Wi-Fi 6 version of the access points. As far as I've seen, there is no such issue with the access point for the 5. And I bought the 6 to have maximum available speed for my laptop. Okay, so now we have this one here. Let's start finally adding sensors in so in the sensor section we need to do, 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 do. let me open it here let me open it like this uh, we need to set up i square c before sensor I will use this code here since this is from previously and I know that it is working. I think that we do not need we do not need setup priority. And now let's add other sensors. C 
singular, not plural. So we have DHT sensor. Let's disable update interval. Then we have this sensor, which is, so this one is temperature and humidity. Then we have this and this is soil moisture. Soil humidity. Okay, then let's copy what's next. BH1750, this is lux sensor. Lux sensor. Then we can copy this, which is so-called fertilizer, but it's not really fertilizer it's a uh, it is but not really and what we still have to do we have to copy battery and i will have to play with this one battery 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 we will put it at the end so at this point i've copied all the previous sensors I had in my last attempt to create good firmware for this board. So let's check. Wi-Fi is here, manual IP, fast connect, I've enabled it this time. I know, I don't know if it will have impact on that authentication, authentication error. So we have this ESP home part, we have API without password to simplify connecting to home assistant logger so that we can track. I square C has been enabled because we have, uh, what is the I2C? This is Lux sensor is on I2C. Binary sensor is pulled from Home Assistant to check if we want to have um, over the air update or not. Then we have sensors, DHT platform on pin 16. This is correct. I have, let me move this to the end. Let me move this to the end. paste same here update interval we will move to the end and disable it lux update interval move to the end and disable it fertilizer sensor move and top uh, adc for battery voltage I have to play a bit with this one here. We will for now... Let's see, let's put this 11. Is it 11? Okay, let's check it here. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know. Uh, on the controller software on the side, there is a switch for auto optimized network. Try to turn it off. I will send you the screenshot. I think I know that where it is. I will do it after the stream and test it then. Uh, so what I'll do here currently for battery, I will disable it. Let me just check if it's 11 decibel or something else. I will be looking at the code for the solar weather station because i managed to fix that one there deep sleep script 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 it's 11 yep it's 11 and accuracy and accuracy i will use this one here um accuracy three decimals we will disable this completely why because this here 
this here then we will use um, this here then we will use and play with it here so how do we do this we have state that is pulled from the previous value so for example this one will be 3 volts and 27 whatever we then we then use the minimum value which we use multimeter previously to see what is the empty battery level which is minus uh, 76 276 then we have to use this one here and this is the difference between the full battery and depleted battery uh in the in the solar it is 0668 and then we multiply by 100 to receive percentage I have to, let's go from here. so here we are pulling the voltage from the pin 33 uh with three decimals whatever value we get here when it's full i have to insert i have to calculate uh the difference be that, between that full battery and this empty battery and then use this to divide so the formula is like this current minus minimum minimum is the battery level when the battery is depleted divided by difference between max and minimum times 100 yay but this should be like this okay so this is the formula so this one here is also done and update interval as last thing has to be moved at the end and disabled why um, some of the sensors some of the sensors need to have tweaked uh, update intervals and i would much more prefer not to specify the interval and just to have one pull of one time pull from the sensor data let's see what's this oh calibration for this salt i have to play with this value here and i also have to play once again with this value uh, this value is calculated in such a way that you let me let me turn the overhead cam on so how do you calculate how do you calculate soil moisture you have to insert the sensor up to this part here whoops up to this part here into the water just be careful not to splash water on the top and then you measure what is the uh, reading of this soil moisture sensor if it's 100 percent if it's full in the water it should be that humidity of the soil is 100 percent then you take that measure and write it down as in water so it has to be this one and next you wipe up wipe uh, wipe off this make sure it is 100 percent dry and then take measure once again whatever value you get there this is the dry value you see it's 3.33 volts 34 volts so you have return minus x and x is the current va uh, value times 100 divided by this here and that's how you calculate the soil moisture for the salt it's more of a Pesser did a great job when he was creating a um, Arduino code for the for the uh, Hygro boards he had a talk with a lot of people that are really into plants and they helped him find the bug with this or bug with any similar device so it has two metal parts here that are used to track the fertilizer or salt in the ground and for this this board is using this here so this is gpio 34 
uh, and when there is no fertilizer in the ground it shows zero when there is a maximum fertilizer and i calculated this really by immersing this completely into the fertilizer liquid fertilizer it reads 1.1 but the problem is that it it is polarizing atoms in the ground so that salt itself is traveling towards the contact that is i think positive and after some time the number starts going down dramatically while still there is a fertilizer in the ground and that's just because most of that is concentrating around one of the poles of this sensor so i don't know if i've been clear about this one or not so what you really would have to do is every couple of days you would need to shake or reposition this board in the ground to have better readings and nobody is doing that i'm not doing that and also uh, when you are watering um, the plant this water will help spread those electrons and and things like that in the ground and of course once again in a couple of days you will have the same problem there okay so uh our board should still be awake save install yeah it's still awake uh manual download legacy format and when we now flash all those sensors that we just added now yeah 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 two pins not in the opinions <laughs> yeah it's it's i i, I you know <laughs> It's, it's, it, you can do, you can do, you know, a light version of everything uh, and say, okay, it's working good enough. I'll pretend it's working okay. But then when you start scratching the surface, you find it tons and tons of reasons why something is what you did and it looks like it's working great. At the end, it's, you know, you have to put note, it's not for scientific purposes. So, yeah um uh, the same the same question or the same same concern people had on how i'm using to track the voltage and percentage of the battery full or not for those devices uh, at the end i'm really not interested if it's really 25 or 35 or 45 percent of battery charge i just know i just want to know if it's going rapidly down or i see that well, well, i still have of i don't know a couple of days of use or weeks of use etc so at the end this will be good enough and i don't think that i'm using salt sensor for anything here i don't even i'm, I'm not even sure that i'm just anymore looking even at, 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 at the, the fertilizer fertilizer sensor oh my god <clears throat> hopefully we will now receive any kind of data the battery is disconnected and yeah hopefully we will receive some data from this and i want to see what data is not updated so i would really need to put now device in a in a in a in a normal work meaning that it updates it stays awake for only three seconds for example which I forgot to do this in code here in the code and it goes to sleep to see what sensors will send data in that three second window and what sensors will miss it. Uh, by the way, I will, I will, my goal from before last summer was to release the code for the hygro boards for the, I apologize for the um, ESP home. So I will be creating additional repository that will feature this firmware. And I really, if anybody is using it and finds some bug in it or improvement, just go ahead. This is more like guideline, not, not of course, any finished product. I never, ever did finish anything up. I know that René, for example, helped a lot with the printer, which is still on my desk here. I really wish that I've, I've done more with that project, but yeah, I didn't. Um, so same thing for the weather station. The code is there. I'm doing currently a couple of tweaks there. 
when I finish with the tweaks and I'm happy with them, I will push it to the repository and use it, abuse it, reuse it, whatever you want to do with that code. Same with this one. Oh, by the way, uh, yeah, once again, I have to brag about something. Uh, GitHub, what is it, how it's called? Uh, uh, GitHub Croatia. Oh my god, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me try to find. Uh, oh, here it is. Copy link. This is funny. Top GitHub users by public contributions in Croatia. Yep, thank you. I miss that every time. Um, overhead. So, top GitHub users by public contributions in Croatia. On third place is Blackadder, and if you guys don't know who he is, definitely check his Twitter, web page. You will find the site with all Zigbee devices compatibility with, with various open source platforms, etc. But, but. Hmm. I'm on 157th place of top public contributors in Croatia. But that's not all. Come on, don't scroll. I couldn't believe. I don't I don't take this seriously because statistics that they take really don't mean anything and but look at this. Top users by followers. I'm on 58th place, even higher than Black Adder. I think he's around. Where is he? Uh, where is he? Black Heather is sorry. Black Heather is at 50th place, and I'm on 58. I, I couldn't believe it. No, uh, this data really, really doesn't mean anything. But it's so fun. And since I work in an IT company and we have developer team, I posted on a Yammer internally. Hey, Andre. Uh, so I posted it on internally on the network, and I said, I'm not bragging, but no, I really am bragging. Okay, I'm on place this and this. Where are you? Yeah, of course, most of those guys are programmers and they don't work on a public projects or public repositories. They work on a either private or locally hosted. So <laughs> most of them are not there, but I had so much fun with this. As I said, it doesn't mean anything, but it's so fun to see this. Uh, prevent the sleep. Let's push the latest firmware version three, flash it. Oh, how I love this. Let's flash the latest version. And we will be wrapping up the stream. Let's just see what we managed to pull out of sensor data. As I said, I will keep working on the code. I hope to have by tomorrow in the evening some version of the code available. Oh no, not again. Not again. So what is this? Uh, 
unknown error. Bus can. Okay, I have to fix it. We have GPIO sending state. Salt, salt, salt. Why is it sending one, two, three, four, five, six? Hmm. Communication with BH1750 failed. I have to fix that one, which I don't know why it failed. It shouldn't fail. Okay, but at least at this point we should... Why is it going to sleep again? Hmm. No idea. Let's go to configuration. Integrations, this one here, and now we have eight entities. And it did pull so far only battery, soil, humidity, and salt. Soil humidity is wrong, it's 169%. So I have to calibrate it once again, but that's something else. And battery is minus. Okay, yeah, it's minus because this one here is this value here. Uh, yeah, add this to dashboard. Plants, add to dashboard. Overview here. Let's remove this card. Yep. And now we have starting point for adding this. Uh, This is the state. This is the binary sensor we created to prevent deep sleep. And these are the values that are pulled here. So, lux, temperature, and humidity are missing. Soil moisture has to be calibrated. Also, salt because it's impossible to have even 6% now since this is just air. And battery 0.157 volts, which is possible because we are not using the battery right now. So it's possible that on this pin we have that voltage. Let's see if I let's see if I connect it. It is now connected and let's restart the board. Once again, error there, standing state, connected, prevent deep sleep, blah, 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 blah. Anything else? No, the voltage is the same. It's the same. Okay, I still have to play with this a lot. Why is it sending state? I have to play with. I'm, I don't. I don't know why it's now showing zero point one six seven volts. Yeah, I have to play with that. Okay, at least now I have the same option that I wanted to have uh, as on weather station to push all the air updates by using the switch and it should be a bit easier now to play with the with the devices here uh, I don't need this to be true but no so uh, let's wrap up the stream for today we passed the two hour mark. I really would like to thank everybody. As I mentioned previously, glasses off. As I mentioned previously, I will be posting uh, this on a separate uh, GitHub page. I will be adding this page to the description of the stream when it's ready. I probably will do it this evening, push first commit and then work on version 0.0.0.7. Um, thanks everybody once again for joining, um, Rene, thank you for, 
3 euros. Um, it will go towards whatever I'm planning to do next. I know that I have to, as I mentioned, and thanks Johnny for pointing me to, to whatever direction. I need to get something something like, like this. Uh, I'll probably find the hot plate of the ring. I'll probably find something that's been sold, sold most of the times on the internet, something like this one. I just need to make sure that it can reach higher temperatures than, for example, just for heating up the, the, the screen. I don't want to have something to heat up the screen. I need to have something that can reflow or desolder my mistakes. So probably something like this one. If, by the way, anyone from you knows Hvala <laughs> Rene, yeah, I will definitely have a beer after the stream. Uh, if anybody, by the way, knows any good soldering or hot iron, uh, hot plates for uh, soldering and also that can be used for uh, reflowing, I really would like, I really would like to thank you. Just send me wherever, Twitter, Discord, leave in YouTube comment. I need to get me one of those. I have to fix some of the things and I cannot use hot air gun for that. I can solder some components with hot air gun, but for those ICs or Zigbee modules, I really need something that, you know, I can put it there and whatever. And also, I wanted to maybe look at one of these. This is currently in my shopping list. I'm still not sure. Hmm, should I get this or not? So, uh, thanks everybody for joining the stream. I hope that it was at least a bit interesting. Um, uh, I really would like to hear from you if you think that it's okay to release next video, next week video about what's new in uh version to 2022.4 or to skip it and do something else i already have here i think it's beta one installed i have to update to beta three and look more in depth what's going on with the home assistant in this latest released uh you too you too johnny thanks everybody um and i'll be seeing you next time until then bye bye and have fun Click link before you leave for the, for the, for the, what link, what link, what link? One you, you've posted previously. Like, oh, I'm blind. I'm ashamed. Thank you. Thank you, Johnny. <laughs> Matia, yeah, I'm blind. I'm I've removed my glasses. Let's pretend that this was because I removed my glasses. <laughs> bye bye everybody. Don't forget to click the like button and I'll be seeing you next time. Thank you everybody. Bye bye. <laughs>